Hello everybody, this is James. Welcome back to my stock channel. This is a quick video on how I analyze balance sheets and income statements and how I view companies to find out when they're going to be hopefully profitable and see the overall health of the company through the cloud, the smoke, the dust of balance sheets and income statements. So we're going to start out with a short example. This is Johnny's Lawn Business. Uh, Johnny wanted to start mowing lawns in 2017. He went public. Uh, he got an IPO. He went and bought a lawnmower with it. Uh, he started mowing lawns. Uh, he mowed lawns all year long. And you'll see right here his uh, lawn mowing activities in this big blue line. The revenue that he took in from mowing lawns all year long. Notice he took a tiny, tiny, tiny loss for the year. Uh, Johnny wants to buy a weed whacker and a blower and a trailer and a truck and a storage unit to keep it all in. Uh, this is Johnny's plan for the future. Uh, he's going to have a better service. He's going to do a better job on people's lawn. He's going to be able to do lawns outside of his neighborhood once he gets the truck. Uh, the trailer is going to help him get around maybe in a bigger mower. So he can get the jobs done faster. Next year comes around. Johnny's still mowing lawns with his mower. Um, makes a, a, a good clip of money. It's almost all profit. Except for here on his balance sheet, we see just a tiny, tiny hair of profit for 2018. Uh, that's Johnny buying his blower. That's Johnny buying his trailer. Uh, putting deposits down on things. Picking them out. Uh, then we go to the next year. Johnny's still working his butt off. Uh, now Johnny's got a trailer. Now Johnny's got a mower. He still doesn't have a truck, but he really wants to get one. He reports zero earnings once again. Uh, keep in mind, Johnny, you know, 80% gross profit here on a, on a lawn mow. You don't see much improvement in the revenue. It's just Johnny going by himself. This is the growth that you can expect. And we go into 2020, and revenue went up a little bit. Johnny's mowing some more lawns. He finally got his truck so he can get around town. He can cover some more lawns. And he's got his trailer. And he's got his weed whacker. He's got his blower. He's got all the tools he needs. Uh, and here he is in 2020. Guess what? He threw up a tiny bit of earnings again. So what the hell's going on? Is this Johnny in an unprofitable business? It sure looks like it. It looks like Johnny just puts up revenue and doesn't deliver any earnings. Um, so then Johnny decides, okay, I got, a, I got this business here rolling. I did more revenue for the year. Uh, my advertising that I, a uh, little bit of advertising that I did works. And then we're going to grow up the company. We're going to add another truck to the business. I have uh, kept all of this money through all of these years. Uh, we are going, to, we've been saving, we've been buying stuff. And now we're going to buy another truck. Uh, I was using my own personal vehicle, but this time we're going to get a company truck. And the company truck, trailer, lawnmower, weed whacker, we're able to buy the whole thing all at once now for 2020. Then we get to roll into 2021, and look what happened to Johnny's lawn business. Now he's got two trucks on the road. They're mowing lawns like crazy. Revenue's booming. Uh, Johnny still puts up a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of earnings. Keep in mind, it's still an 80% margin business. It's a service. Uh, we got man time and operating costs, but the business is growing. Uh, Johnny wanted to take 2021's money, all of it, and expand this business to four trucks. So now Johnny's in a situation where he has four trucks. We can expect the revenue to jump considerably higher, perhaps, if he's still able to sell his lawn services. Uh, but he stripped of the 2021 entire year. He took all of the earnings, all of the profit, all of the income, and he spent it on two more trucks. When will Johnny stop and when will Johnny show us earnings? Uh, I don't know. We will see. But let's take a look at where this money goes and what happened to Johnny here. When you look at this, you can look at it two different ways. You can say, hey, the guy doesn't make any money. Oh, but you need to scroll down to his balance sheet. Let's see what Johnny's been doing. He started out with nothing but a little bit of debt. In 2018, he's just kind of rolling along. He financed a couple of things to help him get started. Then he started paying off the credit cards. 
And here we see Johnny's asset line with uh, four trucks, four trailers, four uh, weed whackers, uh, four mowers, uh, an entire crew ready to rock. All of those losses that you saw up top or near wins, they were very uh, small in either regard. Johnny's goal was to get that income statement to zero this entire time. He did that on purpose. He did that on purpose because he wanted four trucks. He wanted four crews. He wanted a real company that brought in good revenue. And now Johnny has four trucks. So what do we see in 2022? Uh, well, we don't know yet. In reality, uh, yes, we do, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. But this is pretty much how you evaluate uh, these things. You have to find the money in the balance sheet uh, that was spent on a good cause, whether it be an asset or a decline in liabilities. In this case, you'll notice a little yellow line dropped from 2020 to 21. Uh, that's Johnny paying off his credit cards. Johnny's a pretty smart guy. Uh, Johnny's got four trucks. He owns all of them. He owns all the trailers. He almost owns all the mowers. He's still got a few more payments on that. Uh, Johnny's got a screaming revenue. He's got a good advertising program, and they're going to be filled up for the season mowing lawns. And he's decided that uh, four is enough for him to manage, and he's going to manage four crews and get used to doing that for a couple of years before he goes to eight crews or maybe a year. He wants to take a look and see uh, where the business is at and have the business start growing up and earning some cash for his next expansion. So in 2022, Johnny's not going to expand to eight trucks. Johnny's finally decided to take a chill pill. So now in 2022, back to his income statement here, the revenue is going to be about double what this revenue is because this is a two truck revenue. Now he's got a four truck revenue. And this tiny little yellow line is going to become about half of this or more. Uh, Johnny's going to throw a big earnings per share on the board. He's going to keep the money in the business. He's not going to give it away as a dividend. He doesn't need to spend it anymore. Uh, he doesn't want to spend it anymore. He wants to grow the company. He's going to save up some cash. He's going to keep that cash as his nest egg. And he is going to then eventually start buying more trucks and stuff. So we're going to see some more of this zero uh, earning stuff in the future, of course. But Johnny's ready to show us some earnings and take a break and run the company for six months or a year before he goes any further because Johnny's mom and told him to, to walk before you run. And that's what he, the advice he's taken. And he's decided to start reflecting some earnings instead of reflecting assets. So when, when Johnny works really hard and puts up a good revenue number, and you don't see any assets growing, and you don't see any liabilities shrinking, uh, you better see some earnings. If you don't see some earnings, that means he, that means Johnny really didn't make any money for that year. Uh, in 2021, with this tiny little hair of uh, thing, if, if we didn't see that balance sheet jumping and the debt shrinking, we'd know that Johnny wasn't productive. We'd know that Johnny's... Uh, had no profit margin. It's a bad idea. It's a shell company. It's, uh, you know, just somebody's piggy bank, um, basically, to move things in and out of uh, periodically. Uh, nobody's doing business here. Uh, you'll see a lot of companies like that. But the ones that are doing business here, uh, even though they don't show any profit on the board, you can just scroll down to the balance sheet and you can see where their profit went. Just because it goes to an asset, that's a good thing. That means growth for the future in most cases, unless Johnny's idea is dumb. Um, and he's paying off debt, which is another good thing, which means his, his payments are going to be lower on his credit cards, which means his earnings are going to be greater in the future. Ultimately, as a stockholder, you want the same thing Johnny wants. You want uh, no debt. You want a lot of assets. And you want a strong income statement with four trucks and you want to put up, uh, you know, maybe a quarter or 50% of that revenue in earnings per share, keep it in the company, earn the money for the company. In a couple of years, Johnny will be ready to go to 16 or 20 trucks. At this pace, he's certainly uh, on coast uh, on the uh, track to it. So 
when you're reading the balance sheets, the thing to be scared of is when you see losses or you see the flat line here where there's just no profit in it. Usually the flat line is a key indicator. When they try to get it right at zero, like they, they barely make any money or they barely lose any money, usually you can just scroll right down to the balance sheet. You'll find it on there. You'll say, okay, well, Johnny didn't make any money, but he paid off, you know, $900 in credit card bills last month or last quarter. That's a good thing. So I guess Johnny made $900. You can come to that conclusion that he worked and earned and profited $900 and he sent it to the credit cards. No, he's not going to show it on his balance sheet or his income statement yet because he sent it to the credit cards. He can't. Uh, but Johnny's business is growing up and will soon be a great success. And once the world sees the earnings per share, uh, they will give him a nice PE and his stock will be off to the races. So the moral of the story is understand Johnny's path. Everybody understands the lawn business. Uh, it's pretty simple. Mower, truck, trailer, weed whacker, blower. Put some signs out, get some clients, and get to work. You can watch Johnny get into work. You can watch him grow up his balance sheet. You can watch the whole process. You need to understand the businesses that you're investing in the same way that you understand Johnny's lawn service. You need to know what they need to uh, run at the capacity that they're hoping to run at. You need to know when the spending ends and the advertising begins. Uh, sometimes they'll go year after year after year of putting this tiny little line up for uh, earnings, but you'll see revenue booming and yet they're still not making money. That's because they're taking all of their money and they're putting it into advertising to make the revenue boom. So Johnny's taken in this case, maybe in the future, he'd take all of his money and buy TV commercials and signs and billboards and things. He, he's going to make his next blue line lurch up twice as big as the next one. He's going to get more clients. They all get their lawn mowed every uh, week. More money for the company, more revenue, all good things. Uh, if he spends the money in advertising, it's not going to appear on the balance sheet. Uh, it's going to appear in a spike in revenue if it's successful. Or it's going to appear, you know, as a flat line in revenue if it's unsuccessful. So if you see a flat line in revenue, you see this little tiny, I didn't make any money thing, and then you don't see any assets or liabilities being paid off, and you got something to worry about. Johnny's advertising isn't working. Uh, these little parts should all shift in synchronicity and harmony with each other as Johnny makes business moves. Uh, if Johnny shoves a whole bunch of cash in his pocket and goes on vacation for six months and doesn't work, maybe lets his other crews work, but he just kind of willy-nilly goes through it and takes a big bonus, uh, you're not going to see any uh, earnings. You're not going to see any debt going down. You're not going to see any new assets being added. Uh, you'll have a reason to worry. You should pay attention to Johnny's uh, earnings call. You should find out what he has to say about his vacation, you know, whether he had a good time or not, and uh, find out what his plans are for the future. Johnny will tell you, you know, we're going to get to four trucks and then cool off for a while and run the company and get it bigger and then go to 16 trucks. So Johnny will tell you what he's doing. Uh, you'll know when the company's asset has been reached, when the lawnmower is finally paid for and owned. Uh, you'll know when Johnny starts advertising, you'll see the spike in the revenue, but you'll still see no earnings. Um, you'll see the balance sheet uh, getting better with the liabilities going down. Uh, Johnny's going to be making moves quarter after quarter after quarter. Uh, until he has the business in a position to show an earnings per share and be healthy. And in order to show a good earnings per share, you need to have low, you know, lower debt or manageable debt. And then people want to see growth, and Johnny knows that. Uh, he owns you know, 10,000 shares of his own company from the IPO still. He wants these things to be worth 5 bucks a piece, 10 bucks a piece. Johnny's really working on a big business here. Uh, smart kid. And this is how it works. But... Everything should complement everything. Um, if the money's all uh, gone, you better see a, 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 blue, a blue spike in the income statement. And if you don't, you better scroll down to the balance sheet and see some movement. More assets, less liabilities, something. Uh, that's how you tell if a company has health or not. Just because they pissed all their money away on smart things, 
doesn't make them unhealthy in the slightest. In fact, they might be a whole lot healthier. You know, people look at companies and they go, oh, well, they did, you know, 30 cents a share last quarter, and this quarter they only did 5 cents. And they go, sell, sell, sell. You know, no, don't sell. <laughs> Come on. They just... They just upgraded their systems to make everything twice as fast. They went out and bought the 40-inch blade mower instead of the 20-inch uh, mower. Now they can get their lawns done twice as quick. They can take on twice as many customers per truck. Uh, pay attention to the underlying details. Try to get a little involved with them. Um, but yeah, that's the gist of how these uh, income statements and balance sheets jive. Hopefully the business reaches a point of maturity where every penny isn't being thrown into advertising, or they get so darn big they uh, the advertising bill isn't warranted as much. Uh, they start growing through word of mouth and referrals, and, and uh, the cost of a customer gets cheaper and cheaper over time. But uh, that's what you want to look for in your balance sheets. You want to look for maturity, uh, people paying off debt, money going into smart places, them acquiring the assets that they desired, them making the sacrifice year after year after year to get those assets. Johnny practically didn't take a paycheck through all of this to get himself to four trucks. But now he has. Johnny had a long-term plan, and he's ready to rock, and there's really good stock to own, needless to say. But that's how you take a look at the balance sheets and the income statements. Everything should move to somewhere, and if it doesn't, that's when you'd be alarmed. Uh, you see a flat line or a loss and no money went anywhere. Yeah, that, that's them really losing money. That's them selling lemonade for 90 cents when it costs them $1.10 a glass. That's Johnny mowing lawns for $10 each when he should be charging uh, 25 because it costs him 15 so he's losing $5 a lawn. Uh, Johnny's got problems in that case. In that case, you're looking at a business that you don't want any part of probably because the business plan is flawed. He doesn't even have a, uh, a profitable item, a profitable service, a profitable offering. Um, so yeah, the more you look at him is just these lines and, and watch how the lines work and have a clue about the business that you're in. Um, know whether they're subscription based, know whether they're recurring, know whether it's a one-time sale. Uh, do they need to buy advertising every month to grow it up or do they just need to land a distributor? Do they just need to get it into Walmart? Do they just need to, do they, are they going to need to open up a car dealership after they make their electric cars? Uh, find out what they're building, what they're buying, when they're going to be done, how much that's going to cost for realsies, and, uh, and the rest of it. And some of these things you might not be able to predict. Cost of an electric car uh, to put an assembly line together, and that's running anywhere from you know, 500 million to 5 billion. You really don't know in, in some cases. In some cases, they're uh, taking bonuses and doing crazy things all the way throughout. Uh, they're living like CEOs and uh, exorbitant millionaires when they haven't earned a penny yet. And that's disturbing. And it's very much reflected on their balance sheets and on their income statements. And the way it's reflected is the numbers don't jive. But there's Johnny. That's how you look at him. Uh, that's how I read the balance sheets. Um, I figure out what the company has to have, when the company starts selling, where this money is going, good places or bad places. Uh, you can make the determination right there. Uh, people don't throw money at things that if they just want to put it in their pocket, you don't pay off debt. If you're in this for another year or two, and then you're just going to run away as a millionaire, um, you don't pay out. There's no reason to pay off debt. You would pay yourself a bonus. So you learn a lot about their state of mind. You learn a lot about how serious they are. You learn a lot about how profitable they are, how successful they are, um, how much effort they're putting in, what, what stage they're in. Johnny's in the growing stage now. It's obvious Johnny has his product or his, his, uh, his mowers and his trucks. And uh, you can see that on the balance sheet. You can see that by the increase and in spike in revenue. Johnny can do more business now. So, yeah, balance sheets and income statements will tell you everything you need to know. Uh, don't worry about these flat losses or even big, sometimes bigger losses. Sometimes the yellow line will come way down. 
and it might just be Johnny buying his truck, Johnny buying his uh, trailer. Surprised Johnny was able to pay cash for it after these years. That was kind of nice. But yeah, I had just seen a negative, uh, bigger yellow spike. Don't sweat it. Johnny got a truck. Johnny got his mowers. And you see the debt come down in the future. You know, Johnny's paying it off. Uh, take a look at it. Just like your own personal home balance sheet. Uh, know what they're in business trying to do. Know what they need. And know what stage of their business they're in. Are they in shell company stage? Where it just looks like a bunch of a bunch of nothing going on, like no growth, no money. What, what is this? Uh, but if you embrace yourself and what's going on, you'll start to see the future and you'll start to see what Johnny's goal is and you'll know how close he is to his goal. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, how to read balance sheets and income statements. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. I do lots of coverage on uh, several different hot companies, uh, penny stocks to big stocks. Uh, just covering the fundamentals, news, updates. Uh, check out some of my other videos and like this video and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.